So, dickhead, what you want to know? I come before you to ask some questions. No, you showed up here to ask questions? That what you're doing. I thought he'd be doing something fancy and innovative. Uh, isn't that what people come <laughs> here for? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> so, god of... What, what, what are you the god of? Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, what's the deal with the dungeons? Why is there so many, so much freaky stuff going on to even get to Mahav? Well, that's actually kind of an interesting multi-layered thing. But the short version is that it's because of the Chikanma. The Chikanma? Yeah. What's the Chikanma? Chikanma not get them! <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you wise wise new gods thank you very much why did they capture Lagarde then why did the the Rondon authorities decide to imprison him because he was quite the golden child beforehand wasn't he yes he was and there's a couple of reasons for that part of it being that it was actually his plan as part of a really stupid Xanatos gambit so he he wanted to get captured Yes. Why do they want to get captured? Why would you want to get sent to the worst, like, what is actually canonically the worst place in the kingdom? I mean, the short version is because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he got himself captured. And then the reason he's captured is the reason all four of the, the playable characters go to the dungeon to go and get him, right? Well, three of the four. Rackenwald is there to murder him. And he <laughs> happens to be captured. <laughs> At the time. Well, going, going back to the dungeon, why was there a little girl in there? What was the deal with that? Ooh, now that's a complicated one to properly answer. The gist of it, you know, Nilvin, the new god of the Endless. Is she the one that's not wearing a shirt? Yeah, she's the one who gets her, lets her tits hang out. Yeah, she's my favorite. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, she got knocked up by Lagarde in his dreams. In in his dreams? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and little girl was born in the dungeons. She is a prison, maybe. That's kind of terrifying. Yeah. So why was she still there? Like, why didn't they, why didn't they get her out of the dungeon? I can't imagine that's a good place to raise a child. Uh, well, Nilvin's kind of an asshole. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Uh, the final part of this question is, why was Lagarde such a bitch? I mean, he's based on Griffith. Yeah, but... It's just accurate to the source material. But Griffith is cool, so... So I'm not sure how how you get to Lagarde being a bitch from Griffith being, being cool, so... I have never seen taste that bad before. God damn. <laughs> What was, what, what's Pocket Cat? What, what is going on with Pocket Cat? And he's just a very friendly and talkative guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who happens to eat children. Uh, why does he, why does he eat kids? What's going on there? I think the more important question is, why don't you eat kids? Uh, just... <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, don't knock it till you try it, right? Right? <laughs> it's like veal. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like veal, but for pork, it's fine. Oh, God. So it seems like most of the game is people figuring out how to sort of get through that, that ceiling of, of new godhood, which is sort of like a, a, a dead end almost. Yeah, essentially. This hmm. is purely speculation on my part, but... It's my personal theory that it's there, both because the old gods wanted to have the, the uh, have humanity to have something to guide them, and because Rare is a dickhead. <laughs> if you dangle power in front of someone and be like, yeah, let's let you become a god, they're not going to question what type of god they become or whether they'll be as powerful as you. They'll just be like, mm. hell yeah, give me that immortality and power. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And someone that becomes a new god can never become an ascended one. When I was when I was on my way down here to Mahav through the dungeon, I had a I had a few party members with me, and unfortunately, they all died before we got here. And I won't go into the specifics and if I sacrificed them or not. 
but they, they had some questions that they would like me to ask you. So they, I, I wrote them all down. Um, I'll try and skip some Termina ones, unfortunately. Uh, oh no, feel free. I'll just call them an idiot. Okay. I'll just insult you if you ask a question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> this is explicitly a fear and hunger one lore Q and A, and if you ask something different, I'll mock you for it. Um, okay, yep, sorry guys, we did say explicitly Fear and Hunger 1, so this is your own doing. Um, how deep does the Sulphur God's influence by the time of Termina take place? So can you explain the Sulphur God? No, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a two-part question. Who is the Forgotten One from the Fellowship? Is it Nashra or Nosramus? Secondary... Nashra predates the Fellowship, it's Nosramus. Okay. Um, and the second part of the question is, why is Enki so attractive? Please explain, explain Catface. Because you grew up on Tumblr, and the Tumblr brain rot has compelled you to be perpetually attracted <laughs> to Tumblr sexy men like him. <laughs> uh, love him or hate him, Bones is spitting facts, guys. You know I'm right. <laughs> I know how you degenerates work. <laughs> Aren't you a Tumblr sexy man too, Bones? Not intentionally, but yes, I've been called that repeatedly and decided I may as well embrace it. Yeah, okay. So here's an important question. What's the, uh, what is a Tumblr sexy man then? Oh, good God. The most concise explanation of it is that it is the, uh, shut-in weirdo girls version of Tomoko. <laughs> That sort of loser <laughs> that's exceptionally attractive because you can visualize them as attainable. Oh, Bones, you got to kill my audience. Can you stop doing this? You're chasing them away. Oh, fine, <laughs> These are our viewers, Bones. The in here. These are our viewers. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm the number one viewer, Auntie. <laughs> that's true, he is. <laughs> I fucking hate viewers. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, let's get off topic before we lose everybody watching. Um, okay, uh, maybe Greater Blight is not an actual god or not to worship. It would be sort of an echo of dinosaur extinction. Um, but dinosaurs aren't real. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there were dragons, but there's no such thing as dinosaurs. Those are just made up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I guess we we're talking about, about fear and hunger like, lore, so maybe that maybe the dinosaurs oh, are not, real. We're and... not talking about real life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no evidence of dinosaurs in fear and hunger, and I mean, there's no evidence for them in real life either. It's all manufactured, but don't let nobody tell you that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Hmm, didn't hear that one from me. Who is August? August is probably Ragnvalda's descendant. He's, I'll tell you who August is. He's a fucking asshole. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. <laughs> I like how he saves you from being crucified, then just leaves you on the ground with no legs, and it's like, GG, have it's fun. He's a fucking asshole. He's just like, well, <laughs> have fun, buddy. Yeah. Here's a quick chance for you to feel indebted to me. And then, like, if you follow him up on stage one, he'll jump over the fence, and rather than unlocking it from the other side or doing anything to help you, he just waves and walks away. <laughs> he does. A smug piece of shit. Oh, that's great. Can I form a marriage with a guard to gain his massive stinger? No. No? No. No? It would require consent to form a marriage. And it would need to be inside a ritual circle. And I think there would be no faster way than to lose a guard's interest than consent. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite lines in the game. It's just such a subtle thing, right? When you fight the elite guards, it says, he looks at you with disgust. And it's like, the grossest dude, the most twisted guy, and he, he thinks you're disgusting. You a normal human is disgusting. And I just love that little touch. I think, it's, I think it's one of the best lines in the game, just because it's so subtle. Nice. Subtle things about that. Oh, actually, I just remembered one question that never got answered. Oh, yeah. What would you like to see in Fear and Hunger 3? Ah, right. I would like to see something specifically set in modern era, probably Japan in particular, although it, all Bones. things considered, it's likely to be Finland in the modern era, with virtually no real tools to defend yourself. Combat exists, but ever getting into it is a horrific idea. I thought this was going to be like a Persona joke or something. What the fuck is... I've never played a Persona. <laughs> Although, actually, that would kind of fuck. 
like fear and hunger, but like you have to build relationships with the other <laughs> dudes, and it's just persona. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. And the more deep your relationship is, and the farther along their backstory you are, the more points you get when you sacrifice them. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, you you fall in love with somebody, and like, you know, you give them special items, like, you know, a marriage ring or whatever. And then you sacrifice them to Grogoroth, and you get, like, max affinity instantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially good if it, like, it really makes you care about the characters and empathize with their struggles. Mm. I love that sort of... I think Lucian Arrow... Pluto narrative dissonance, but conflict between morality, yeah, and gameplay, yeah. People will always say that, like, oh yeah, you know, I built up these relationships, and then you know, I, I had the choice to betray them at the end. It didn't make sense. It's like, well, you know, you can you can lie. Like people do that all the time. Like you know, politicians have a long history of building up relationships <laughs> with people and then lying to them at the last minute. Like it's not that's not weird. People do that. Just gotta give the mechanical incentivization for it. So yeah, people people say they wanna they want a modern one, and everybody everybody says that because you know uh, Orange actually posted, I think it was on Twitter that the original plan for Fear and Hunger Two was modern, and there's a picture of Levi uh, in a room with like a computer and stuff. But uh, the other day on my, on my stream we were, we were talking about it, and one of the cool ideas we came up with was uh, Cold War era would be sick. So, so definitely like more advanced. Thirty years after the current one. And so, yeah, you know, you've got the Cold War between Bremen Empire and Eastern Union. And that way you have moon travel, because I think Abella talks about one of her endings is her going to the moon or building a rocket um, to go and fuck up Rare, get some answers for once. Oh, uh, fuck. I've got to change my answer for what I want to see in Fear and Hunger 3. Yep. Just set it in space and make it Evangelion. <laughs> Give me giant Fear and Hunger mechs. Wow. That would be kind of sick. You could do some cool stuff with that. Full god twisted mechs. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrificing entire space colonies to Grogora. Oh god. Yeah, blowing up in style. Yeah, yeah, like you know, the colony ships blowing them up and like you it reveals that there's a Grogora sigil painted on the side all all the time. <laughs> oh man, that'd be evil. Or uh, an abominable marriage, but it's the whole spaceship. Wait, oh, isn't, man. isn't this basically forty K? Yeah, I mean kinda. Maybe we shouldn't go down that path. Favorite ending. Oh, favorite ending from from which from from both games or? I mean, favorite ending. Both yeah, games yeah, have okay. endings. Favorite ending. Um, I I I do like the classic where you leave the dungeons and you think you do, and it's not clear whether you're actually just trapped there or you're just gone mental, and you think you're trapped there. I think that's I think that's a great way just to say you're just fucked. You're done. <laughs> You enter the dungeon and you're not leaving, either physically or metaphysically, you're not leaving. I think that's very Fear and Hunger ending. And my favorite is the precise opposite of that. It's the oh. happy ending. <laughs> Which is the happy ending? <laughs> that's the one where Kahara gets rich and, like, all the Nolan are eating out of his hand and he got out of the dungeon intact. And he's just, like, fucking all the bitches. Yeah, that, that, is, a, that is a pretty good ending. I, I like how many, how many questions for the lore of Fear and Hunger, the answer is just, I don't know, or maybe... <laughs> I mean, not everything is explained. That's what makes it an intriguing mystery. Yeah, yeah, it is.